So not all my hands up. Yeah. Double down on leg locks, maybe. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> As I was a kilogram guy, I'm like, maybe I should learn to pass the Maybe everyone's so worried about like yeah. this or this, they do that. Yeah. So it's your rolling to keep your neutral heel. So the straight full ups there.
cut that out. That was it, that was it, was it leg lock? <laughs> Just that's the fucking tea bag. I don't mind it. How heavy are you? 82, 83. Yeah, come on. You can move like that. Under 100 kilogram division. All my big guys, I'm like, gotta be fucking fluid. Gotta be. Yeah. So many big cunts are like this. Did you find it easier against bigger guys sometimes? Because they don't, they don't move like that, do they? As long as you've got your fit and you can keep your frames, easy, easy. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. My best performance have always been a little heavy. Yeah. You can make middle, why bother? Yeah. You go faster and more dynamic. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's after middle heavy in particular, heavy weight, super heavy, everything gets much slower. Much stronger, it's cool. The thing is, as well, it's such. Like, I always coach my, all my massive guys have a super good guard because, yes, you might be on bottom versus somebody equally as big. If you break that paradigm, put them on your opponent on the back, they are fucked. So fucked. Yeah. yeah, like, if you spend your entire time in Jiu Jitsu developing top and bottom, it's not that mental mind fuck. When you've been here for all the round and you're like, oh shit, having that moment in a match is catastrophic. Yeah. See what I mean? Most big guys are so reluctant to do that. Yeah. Play off the back, get smashed, get smashed. Yeah. Like when, they, when it happens to them in a match, it's fucking catastrophic. Because they're unwilling to put themselves in a, in a bad spot. I'm on my guys back so much, especially the big guys. Start your back, start your back, start your back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm... Yeah, it's... Uh, That's my breath. Submitting people from the bottom takes like a certain level of technique. It's hard to be strong to do that in. For sure. That teaches you to be technical then, doesn't it? But like I always... From like a philosophical standpoint, I always... Like one of the ones I always have a bit of a rant at the end of the match. Uh, match not match. At the end of the night. Yeah. Interrogate the reasons why you're picking the round you are. You know I mean, everyone walks off, gets a water. Yeah, you. Yeah. Because you know you can beat that guy, you know you can spank him, yeah. you know you can tap him, make yourself feel good. Is that why you're picking him? Or you're looking around going, he's going to put me on the back foot. Yeah. You know I mean, and it's easy. You've had a long day at work, your wife's been in your ear, yeah. and you're like, I just want to feel good about myself. I'm going to pick that guy. I know his game inside out, I know I can beat him. I always say to my guys, don't pick rounds for that reason. Like, if you pick somebody who you know you can beat, we'll do things that technically challenge you then. Don't play your A game. Yeah. Play you, you know, with this new inverted guard you're to play, but or look for that guy and go, him. Yeah. Like, you know, as I said to you earlier, like, I've got a very busy, challenging lifestyle. Last week, I had three nights, kids not sleeping, work super stressful, my back's been playing up. Did all the rounds in the last round. The up and coming guy, Curtis, purple belt, similar to me, really is pushing me at the minute. Yeah. And inside I was weak, I was like, don't want to do it. I was like, right, me and you, let's do it. Yeah. And then for the comp guys, every night we, we'll do like seven, 5.30 rounds, something like that. So we're all tired. And I was like, we'll just skip the burpees. I always do burpees for competition guys at the end. Yeah. Skip them. And I had that little bit of a weak moment inside. I was like, fuck it, get through it, get through it. No, they build, don't they? The more weak moments you have, Everything becomes, oh, I can get out of it, I can get out of it, I can get out of it. The thing I was to say is, make a little hard decision. Lots of little hard decisions yeah. amplify up over time. Once you start making those little weak ones, whew, yeah, it's easy then, you know what I mean? It is. It goes from, I'll skip that tough round and I'll skip the burpees to, I'll skip training tonight. Yeah. I'll Instead of, yeah, and I'll have a week <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah. And then after two months off, you've got a fat beer belly. Whew. Yeah. You've got to stay on the horse, man, because once you get off it, yeah, it's harder. No, I agree completely. Straight four locks, yeah. Cool. So sit on your bum. So whenever I teach this, I always.
piss people off straight from the outset, right? If you piss people off from the outset, they can't be disappointed any further, okay? So, the way I piss people off, I call this crappy footlock, okay? So anyone that teaches this or does this, I'm sorry, the, but the reason it's called crappy footlock, okay? Several things. Looking at um, Dave Legg as an analogy, right? You know you see in the gym, videos of dickheads with 20 plates on, the leg press? Mm -hmm. They're leg pressing like that, yeah? Because your, your legs are strongest when they're at full extension, when your knees are parallel with your chest. Yeah. So with that concept in mind, right? Broadly, your legs are pretty straight and your knees parallel with your chest. Yeah. So you put the boot on here and I can squeeze it. So I'm, you, know, you put the boot on as hard as you can and I'm gonna go for it. <clears throat> I had to hold my breath, look how much energy I had to expend in doing that because I've not broken that concept. So the way I always immediately teach people, rather than this here, and especially because I've got no purchase on your hips, you imagine like, if you're gonna stand on something only on that much of your heel, is it gonna be very strong? No. So whenever I'm teaching straight foot locks, as the people start to attack that immediately, I open that ready, and I bring the inside leg in. Now, when I do this, okay, I've got, first and foremost, I've got a much greater area, finding the hip bone. So I'm creating a fixed point, which I'm stapling to the floor in your hip, and then I can go around moving everything away from that. The next concept though, however, is, remember what we said about the leg press machine? I wanna to start to put a bend into your leg. So the more I can put a bend into your leg, the more difficult it is for you to escape. So if I go from here, I start to fold behind, and you start to try and pull your leg out, it's very difficult, because you've gotta get your leg straight before you can extract it. But not only that, once I'm starting to shoot my elbow behind you, I'm breaking the um, parallelism of the knee to the chest. So as I'm here, I'm gonna go behind. Now your knee is almost 90 degrees off your center line. Yeah. Now let's talk of grips in hand. Two schools of thought, both are right. I slightly prefer shallow grips. So everyone's taught this. But the problem I have with this, with my elbow so far forward and buried, I can lean back as much as I want, but you put the boot on, I can see your toes out the back. So what I tend to do when I've got this grip here, I go shallow and I leave space here, okay? But what I want is that bony, horrible bit at the bottom of your thumbs to be attacking your Achilles. Yeah. So much so, that on both arms, you see I've worn the hair away? Yeah. I've worn the hair follicles off on the, either side from attacking straight foot locks so much. Now, as we're attacking this, I'm gonna go loose, and then I'm gonna shoot my body all the way to the, bo to the back, here. But, and then, as I pinch my elbow, you try to put the boot on there, your foot is touching my uh, body. There's no way to fire it through. Now the way like, I demonstrate this, laying you flat on your back, using that bony horrible bit, I'm gonna slide that down your uh, ankle, but when it contacts your heel, watch what happens, there's movement, there's friction. See that? So I'm gonna utilize that piece of friction and I can afford to be loose. So as we've got into this position, I can see your toes out the back, you can put the boot on. As you're starting to do that, I go open, one, two, shallow, and I just shoot. But see how I shoot my body weight back? His foot's disappeared, and I've got this shallow grip here. Now, remember what I said about like it being shallow? The one risk I've then got from this position is if you just rotate your knee out and pull your ankle, boom, easy peasy. So the benefit is I'm reducing your ability to put the boot on, but the risk is it's easy for you to escape. Yeah. So now what I do to combat that, second analogy, rather than have my elbow flared forward, have you watched bodybuilding footage before? <laughs> Some people more than others, <laughs> okay? But I'm gonna do the, like, the side chest motion where I do this, okay? So I'm gonna engage my lats and my rear delt, but what, what that does is it kills all the space between that elbow. So I've been loose, I've shot, I'm at the end of the lever, you can see the front of the ankle joint here, and then I'm gonna engage my lats and start to pinch there. Now once I'm in this position, this is what I call TV position up on my elbow, because it's comfy, right? You'd sit, you'd sit in, your, um, in your living room, yeah, having a kebab <laughs> on the beach, whatever. You'd be on a beach, I'd be eating a kebab at home, <laughs> okay? But it's comfortable, right? Just because it's comfortable doesn't mean it's mechanically the best thing to do. So once I'm here, I've got the shallow grip, I'm gonna bring this elbow and touch it here. So that, that sound, it's not me having a good time with myself. 
it's space between my elbow and my ribs. I'm gonna remove that space. So I'm gonna crunch here, chuck this elbow back. Boom. Now, how's that feel? Last but not least, I'm gonna fist myself. I mean, bunch my fist up here, so rather than a, fl <laughs> rather than a flat hand, I go fist up into the Achilles. But now, remember the, the example we did before? I call it the rapist straight foot, I was squeezing like fuck. Look how little muscular effort I need to do to get the finish. So the concepts are, bend the leg as much as possible. Turn the knee through 90 degrees of, of your chest line. Shallow grip with the bodybuilder's side chest. And then squeeze with your foot. So crappy footwork. As you start to push, I open. Second leg. Knees are going to compress. I go, shoot. Bodybuilder. Knees. Fold. Fist myself. And get the finish. Sorry. Straight foot lock. That's very cool. Thanks very much. Oh, that was very cool. Yeah. Nice. Feel shit, doesn't it? Yeah. So, like, I, the other school of thought is the shotgun. Yeah. And the reason I teach this one first, right? So, you're the Matthias Szczyzniewski. Sorry about <laughs> Mur know. Murdered his <laughs> Polish name there. Sorry, but York shouldn't translate well to Polish. So, he does the, the shotgun grip, which is the deeper grip. Right, yeah. Now, still works just as, as great, but what I tend to do, when I've tried this one, my first one, mm -hmm. that's assuming they don't start to parry that. So as people start to parry that, and get rid of that from the hip, the paradigm changes, because I've got no hip pressure then. So then I go to my shotgun grip in here, yeah. okay? The reason the shotgun grip works, well let's imagine like my elbow here, is position zero, yeah. and that would be position 10, like off my elbow and onto my tricep. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I've got this deep grip. I'm gonna go from position zero to like eight or nine, which means that my elbow's almost off and I'm falling backwards. So I bring this in to here, take my R and C grip. Now the, the, the job I've got to do is I'm gonna lean my weight that's naturally falling over into your toes, okay? So I'm leaning my torso weight through the toes and then I'm gonna kick this leg down and I'm going to use my hamstrings to curl, but watch what happens to my hips as I do that. I fully engage your leg and I'm taking the slack out of it. So as I'm here, I go, oh, a little extra tip as well. If your leg's caught on the inside, rather than doing it, uh, it not doing anything, I slide that down. My toes come over the top of my, my uh, quad and then watch, I flex there, but it'll take just that little bit of extra slack out. Here, position 10, job's done. That's the difference between the shallow grip and the shotgun grip. Um, false reach is kind of like the new school way of entering saddle position. Ever know what saddle is? 411. So, for me, like inside heel hooks are the most devastating leg finish you can hope to get within Jiu Jitsu, okay? And saddle is one of the most devastating places to do that because of the level of control, but also, most importantly, the forces you can generate, okay? Now, false reach is a method of getting there. Um, very new uh, in terms of how it came about. Um, I created it. No, so I saw this I think 2018 on Polaris. Lachlan Giles was doing it in a match versus Tarza. He didn't get it off, but it was like it was enough to watch me try it and be like, "Shit, what's that he's playing?" Now, like any good fanboy, immediately after he'd lost his match, I'm like, "Mate, show me what, show me what you're doing." Like a fucking weirdo, he's just wanted to chill out because he's lost his match and I asked him what the technique was. So anyway, he showed me, which is good. I've literally spent probably the last um, four years of my life just trying to like develop it and stuff. Lachlan Giles has been to my gym for no years. Um, we've thrown ideas around, so I've managed to pull a lot of new threads on that. We realised the enemy of this move is him straight on his leg, yeah? If I've gone here and I just roll immediately to my left and he puts his leg on, that's when it becomes difficult. So the way I want to execute this move now then, guys, is I'm going to roll the long way round. Pull by, how's that feel? Pretty uncomfortable. Then a kick. I'm going to get to this position here for saddle. So once I've done all that, now I'm here. Deadlift is a stronger lift, yeah? So if we're trying to break Chris's knee, why the hell would we be trying to use a twisting motion through our spine when what we should be doing is fucking his knee. Point and twist, boom, his knee's going down that way. So with my legs being in this configuration, there is fuck all stopping him. Now if I bring my knees up here, basically my meat is stopping his knee. 
You try and turn your, neck, your foot now, his knee's gonna try and rotate through my quad. I've put a wall up in front of his knee. Oh, got quite a good poker face, you there, pal. <laughs> you won't be fucking looking like that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> joking, mate, joking. But now, I've compromised TV, I've compromised my structure, I've got rid of TV position. Now all of my torso's weight is leaning on Chris's toes. Now if he tries to ballerina toe out of that, again, he's stuffed into my meat. Slacks out, then I lean more into my delt, I lift my arse up, but now, remember we're not in the thoracic twist anymore, what, are we, what lift are we into? Deadlift. There. Now, which do we think is going to win? Chris's um, ligament flexibility or my hip running out of travel. Which you think is going to win? Yeah, exactly. So you get in this position here in a, in a match, I can push, 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 push. But let's compare to the demonstration we did earlier. See how little I moved then compared to that demo when I did this. See the difference? Huge. Because you're so much more powerful here and it's so vulnerable.